Happy Ada Lovelace Day, everyone. It's the second Tuesday in October, which means it's not only Patch Tuesday for Microsoft, it's also the day that we celebrate women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in honor of Ada Lovelace. Joining us to talk about why we're still talking about Ada is Erin Carson, reporter at CNET. Welcome, Erin. Hi, thanks so much for having me. So as you correctly write, Ada Lovelace gets name checked a lot. Uh, talk a little bit about who she was. Sure. So Ada Lovelace was born in 1815. Her dad was the uh, notable English poet, Lord Byron. And she's mostly known for her work uh, with Charles Babbage, who was a mathematician, and uh, primarily on his analytical engine. So what that was, was basically a proposed general purpose computer. So she wrote, or she translated an article about the analytical engine into Italian. And what kind of came out of that was that she had this incredible, not only a grasp on what the analytical engine was, but like what it could be in the future. So some of the ideas that she talked about, it's kind of like a shorthand is like, you know that we don't have to use this just as a calculator, right? Like we can do a lot more with this than just crunch numbers. Um, so one of the things that she was talking about, you know, was the idea that uh, content, I guess as we would put it today, something like musical notation, for example, could be represented in a digital form and then manipulated by a computer. So in a lot of ways, she made this incredible conceptual leap to what we understand today as computers. And yet it was only the mid, like mid 1800s. So, yeah. <laughs> so there are a lot of forgotten females uh, in technology. Who are some of the other ones that you talked about in your article? Sure. So uh, a really fascinating set is uh, the six women who were the original like programmers of the ENIAC computer in the 40s, like 1946. And uh, when the ENIAC sort of first debuted, uh, they were completely left out of coverage, which is sort of sad. But later on, they're kind of finally getting some of their dues. Um, and also, you know, as a lot of folks have probably heard, um, there's a book and a movie coming out called Hidden Figures, and that's about three women who are mathematicians for NASA and helped do the calculations that put John Glenn in orbit. And that's just a, kind of another case of you sort of step back and go like, wait, how am I just hearing about this? Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a long track record. So, Tom, I know uh, we've known each other for a while and you've been following tech history. Um, you, you know, post about it, you talk about it. Has Ada Lovelace always been there for you or is this is her name popping up more more recently? Oh, yeah, she's been there for a long time for me as somebody who's been interested in tech history, as as you know, someone who is widely credited with writing the first computer program, even if it couldn't be executed. Uh, you know, June 5th and December 10th are other important dates around her. June 5th is when she met uh, the uh, Mr. Babbage in question. And of course, December 10th that that Aaron talked about. Um, so she is important, but I believe she is getting more attention over time as people look for female role models for tech and, and STEM in general. And do you think that we, um, I'll start with you, Aaron, and I'll ask this question. Do you think that we are giving her more credit at this point than she really deserves? Or do you think that her, she was just forgotten so long and, and that's why we are making more of her now? Or do you think it's a little bit of both? You know, I think that's one of those things that's kind of hard to say. There was this huge revival for Babbage in the 80s, in the 90s, in terms of interest. And so you had these like two schools of thought that kind of emerged. And one was really sort of heavy on saying like, yes, she was this phenomenal visionary. And, you know, the other one was kind of like, eh, she didn't do much. Like Tom said, like, she didn't really have anything to, to program at the time, you know. Um, but I think that it's, you know, worth noting that she wouldn't be the first historical figure that gets uh, credit for her thoughts, her big ideas, you know. And, uh, and these days she's, you know, lending her uh, name and her face to the women in tech movement. And also, you know, like Tom uh, mentioned, kind of that, that need in the industry for women to have role models. So at this point she's almost becoming something more, if that makes sense, you know? For sure. And I mean, you know, this theme, has, I mean, since we've started doing this show, especially, we've seen this kind of, this theme of the tech industry really 
kind of trying to put mechanisms into place to kind of eat, level the playing field to a certain degree, um, make sure that, you know, that the technology space is inclusive on all sorts of ways and, you know, gets gains that perspective of, let's say, you know, women in tech or, you know, whoever, everyone basically, so that the tech is, is formed around everybody's image. Are we, so the Ada Lovelace Day was, was first introduced eight years ago. I guess my question is, you know, eight years is, is a short amount of time, but do we feel collectively, and I guess anyone can answer this question, are we better off now in this perspective than we were eight years ago uh, when it started? I know it was it was created to raise awareness for this type of stuff. Uh, Tom, what do you think? Um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to say without going out and measuring it sure. and saying, okay, do we have what's our percentage gain? Uh, and and I haven't looked at those numbers, but. There have been gains, and there certainly is more awareness uh, of people like her. I remember at Tech TV, we were doing stories about Grace Hopper and her work developing COBOL in the U.S. Navy and how she was involved in the people who first popularized bug as a word. And I had never heard of her before. And now she's a household name among tech people. She is she is much more well-known. That's not to say there there isn't more to go as far as discovering all the people who have contributed uh, to the development of technology. But even when you talk about people like um, Alan Turing, he has been rehabilitated and started to get his due. And as that has happened, you start to see other people that worked on his team that he outshone, right? And so you start to say, well, wait a minute, Turing didn't actually do that. It was his staff member. It was someone who worked on his team. And that's the way a lot of these things happen. You, you start by just wanting to have that one person because it's easier to wrap your head about. But as that person gets more known, you start to know all the people behind the scenes. And I think that's a good thing that is continuing to happen. What about you, Baron? Do you think things yeah. have changed? I mean, um, either like in the last eight years or since you've been covering technology, which might be about the same amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things like you can always look at these markers where you go like, wow, you're like, yeah, we, you know, there is a difference now. But then you look at some of the diversity reports and you kind of go like, ah, such a long way to go. Um, but, you know, something that I thought about a lot when I was uh, writing the article that I did for CNET was I took a computer class from second to eighth grade. I had a textbook that talked all about folks like, you know, Blaise Pascal and Charles Babbage. And, you know, when I was eight years old, I could have told you who Charles Babbage was, but Ada Lovelace was not in there at all. I'd like to think that if a textbook was being written today, she would be. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting point because we were talking about technology in schools and, you know, some people in chat room were saying like, you don't, you know, I didn't need technology, but like, that's one of the good reasons. Like, you know, being able to not just have a textbook that's been around for however long, like right. I might've used the same yeah. textbook that you did in a computer textbook, maybe not, but, but yeah, it is, it's a good, that's a good point. So who are some of uh, your role models in tech, Aaron? Like who, uh, who, who do you think we should celebrate on uh, Ada Lovelace Day? Yeah, so uh, Grace Hopper, that was that was one I think I was telling you before the show, and she's been super top of mind because the Grace Hopper Women in Computing Conference or celebration is next week. Um, and just recently, I kind of went went back and I was watching this interview that she did with uh, David Letterman in the 80s, where she's just, she's brilliant and she's hilarious. Um, and someone a little bit more modern, the president of Harvey Mudd College, uh, Maria Claw, she's done just an, an immense amount of work to boost the number of not only women at the school, but women in the computer science major, um, women and minorities, which is super important. And so, you know, whenever you hear that this can't be done, Harvey Mudd is one of those places that you can point to and be like, well, they're they're doing it. So <laughs> Right. Yeah. The question of like, well, women don't like engineering. They they don't come and apply. But yeah, you look at the statistic of Harvey Mudd and what she's done there, and that's not necessarily true. Well, Erin, thank you so much for joining us. Erin Carson is a reporter at CNET. She is at Erin Carson on Twitter. And so you can see all of her work there. You you wrote a couple more articles today beyond just Ada Lovelace. So thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. Take care.